Hello, welcome. In our last class, we have uh, discussed on different type of electron cons used in the scanning electron microscope. There are four um, different type of electron guns, uh, uh, tungsten filament thermionic gun, lanthanum hexaboride thermionic guns, then we have a cold field emission gun and then we have a short key emission gun. There were four electron guns uh, we have discussed and how they function. So, today we will discuss little more about characteristic of those electron guns and then we will proceed to electromagnetic lenses used in scanning electron microscope. So, these are the main characteristic of the gun emission current density. A higher emission current density is preferred, but not the ultimum case. Similarly, a higher brightness is crucial to get more signal from the specimen and brightness is uh, defined as the beam current per uh, here the brightness is defined as as the beam current per unit area per solid angle. So, brightness not only depends on the beam current, but also the cross sectional area of the uh, beam and angular spread of the electrons. Uh, as it uh, I can write brightness is put as a formula beta, beta is equal to let us say current per area into solid angle. This is what brightness. Now, current is how much I let us say we can write I p, why I write I p? This is the prop current, electron beam prop current, prop current means the current at the sample surface when electron beam strikes the sample surface and how much current is at that point on the specimen is called prop current. Then area, area we know uh, pi r square, pi r square here r is nothing but uh, that uh, uh, prop diameter divided by 2, prop diameter divided by 2 then I can write prop diameter is dp let uh, that I can write here pi dp square divided by 4 this is area. And then solid angle in this cases we can write solid angle pi alpha p square here alpha p is the convergence angle in the radian alpha p is the convergence angle in radian for solid angle, for solid angle we write pi alpha, for solid angle we write pi alpha square, alpha p square, solid angle, this is pi alpha p square and the um, it is steradian, unit is steradian. So, this is nothing but uh, for i p divided by uh, pi, uh, pi square d p square alpha p square alpha p square this is the brightness where i p is the prop current that is current at the specimen surface and d p is the diameter of the prop uh, at this spe uh, specimen surface and then we have alpha p is the convergence angle. So, now uh, brightness if the prop diameter is more that brightness will be more similarly if the convergence angle will be more then uh, brightness will be less. Uh, if the prop diameter is more brightness will be less and if the alpha p convergence angle is more then brightness will be less and brightness will be more only when the prop current is higher. So, therefore, it means that we should have uh, higher prop current to get higher brightness. Now, uh, as electron beam pass through the different lenses, uh, 
different type of lenses the beam current or the prop current uh, that uh, the electrons which are coming when electron comes through the column we said is a beam current uh, at the cathode we say cathodic current then once the electron beam coming down the column then we said the beam current beam current is uh, terminology given as ib so that beam current uh, it is the um, um, current current of electron beam in the column in the column then when it falls on the specimen we say it is uh, ib uh, prop current we said it is IB beam current. Okay. So, now for uh, this is what the brightness formula uh, for all electron guns for all electron guns this brightness uh, this brightness will increase with accelerating voltage. If we have a higher accelerating voltage that is the voltage between the cathode and anode you remember noted that in the in an electron microscope or scanning electron microscope or cathode is at negative potential and anode is at ground potential. So, if we have a larger um, uh, voltage difference then we have a higher accelerating voltage and then if a higher accelerating voltage this brightness will be more for thermoionic cones uh, or for, for thermoionic emitters thermoionic emitters this brightness the maximum brightness beta maximum can be written as J c J c is cathodic current density E v 0 divided by pi k t. So, here beta maximum is the maximum theoretical brightness and J c is the cathodic current density cathodic current density and V V0 is the accelerating accelerating voltage and T is the temperature absolute temperature. So as we increase the uh, voltage accelerating voltage our brightness is incre um, increases brightness increases. On the other hand uh, for uh, uh, for uh, fill emission gun uh, for fill emission gun the brightness depends on the field strength uh, the maximum theoretical brightness beta maximum will be equal to uh, is equal to J c E v 0 divided by pi del E because we do not have a temperature here. Previously in this case temperature, but in for a field emission gun we do not uh, apply temperature. So, here del E is the energy spread del E is the energy spread which is like 0.3 EV for cold field emission then rest of the term have same. So, what we can find and in this cases uh, for field emission gone uh, the J c is also quite high here in this cases uh, in for field emission gone J c is around uh, 10 to the power uh, 4 to 10 to the power 5 ampere per centimeter square for a field emission gone. Uh, so, this is uh, and we can have a beta beta maximum here uh, beta maximum will be around like uh, in the range of 10 to the power 9 9 ampere per centimeter square at 20 kb which is around 100 to 1000 times higher than the thermionic one. So, this is about the brightness which are very important uh, parameters for the gun characteristic. So, then the lifetime say so, as we in, uh, discussed before as we discussed before lifetime uh, reduces if we operate at the high temperature uh, for tungsten uh, which is operated at 2700 Kelvin lifetime is around 50 to 100 hours. On the other hand uh, lanthanum hexabrite 
is operated at little lower temperature around 1800 Kelvin. So, therefore, its lifetime is more and accordingly field emission gun lifetime is much more than the thermionic gun. So, this is lifetime. Then source size, source size if the source size is smaller than the ground cr crossover or the electron beam size or electron spot size, electron beam spot size will be smaller. For, for tungsten, for example, tungsten thermionic gun, uh, it is like around 50 micrometer D0. On the other hand, it is like uh, this is for thermionic, uh, for lanthanum hexabaride, if it is lanthanum hexabaride, it is around like uh, 1 to 5 micrometer and for uh, uh, field, em uh, field emission gun, it is around um, 1, to 5 na 1 to 5 nanometer, this is the source size. So, if source size is smaller, then we can have a much finer electron beam spot. Then energy width, we have discussed energy width is uh, much smaller for field emission gun as compared to other gun. Beam stability, field emission is not that good, but uh, other, other guns have higher beam stability. So, these are the main uh, electron gun characteristic which will play important roles in the performance of a microscope. So, then after the um, gun, we have uh, lenses. So, lenses like uh, we use electromagnetic lenses. So, by passing the electric current into the lens, we can change the strength of the lens uh, and therefore, uh, we can uh, change its focal point etcetera. So, mo mostly electron lenses or uh, electromagnetic lenses are used in scanning electron microscope to make the beam smaller. So, that uh, a finer electron beam means a smaller spot size uh, can incident on the sample and can provide the information from a small area and therefore, it can gives us high resolution image. So, here is in the right side you see the ray diagram of a lenses and how the uh, length strength will determine the focal length and here focal length is the distance between the lens at which electron beam starts bending and then where it crosses the optical axis that is the focal length. Higher the length, lens strength we will have a smaller focal length and the focal length uh, is nearly proportional is nearly proportional to the uh, accelerating voltage V0 divided by n i to the square, where n is the turn of, turns of wear in the coil, electromagnetic coils and i is the current. So, as you see, so if, uh, if the current is small, then f will be large. So, focal length will be large. On the other hand, if current in the lenses is more, then we will have much smaller focal length. Similarly, if the accelerating voltage is larger, then we have a larger focal length larger focal length will produce a, um, a beam size which is little wider or little bigger. So, uh, before we discussed about the electron gun and then we have to discuss on the condenser lens. It is the electromagnetic lens coils which is used to condense and demagnify the electron beam. So, let us talk about the condenser lens. It is uh, there are around uh, two, 2 to 3 uh, such condenser lens used in scanning electron microscope. Mostly 2 condenser lens are used in scanning electron microscope to condense or demagnify the electron beam. Demagnify the electron beam. So, these uh, 2 condenser lens uh, work as a pair to reduce the uh, electron beam size or spot size in the uh, column. Then after the condenser lens, we have objective lens and these objective lens are the final lens in the electron column and they focus the electron beam onto the specimen uh, and additionally they demagnify the electron beam. There are uh, three type of uh, objective lens we use, uh, one is pinhole lens, name is pinhole lens where the specimen is placed outside the lens and its magnetic field. Then we have immersion lens uh, that is called also in lens, pinhole lens is also called out of, out of lens because it is the sample is placed outside the lens and in immersion lens the specimen is placed inside the lens and its magnetic field. 
then we have snor snorkel lens which is the semi lens lens where magnetic field reaches out to the specimen below the lens and in any in scanning electron microscope we have a control panel which is like a keyboard where we have different knobs and as you see in the right side of this one of the knob as you rotate the knob uh, you change the current to the lens as you change the current into the lens the focal po point or focus point changes and then you focus your sample surface. So, by uh, rotating these knobs uh, that is in the scanning electron microscope you would able to control the focus point and that would allow you to get the uh, good quality image. So, now we will discuss one by one uh, let us say uh, first is pinhole lens or it is also called out of lens type this is also called out of lens. Why say we why we say out of lens because as you see this is here sample sample or specimen placed below the lens. Here uh, the magnetic field of the lens is within the lens and sample is kept outside the lens thus it has it can uh, it uh, it will not allow to have a very small working distance because the sample is outside the lens therefore we cannot have a very small um, working distance so working distance is the distance between the objective lens middle of the objective lens to the specimen surface that means from where the electron beam starts to bend and to the focus point is our working distance because here sample is placed outside the lens system we cannot have a very small working distance and we will see what is the consequence of that. But this uh, out of lens or pinhole lens has two advantages. Here sample is placed outside the lens system therefore sample there is no limit to the sample size as big sample as you can take uh, as big um, uh, depending on the size of the chamber you can take a, a sample of the size as big as chamber size. So, this is one advantage and then as I say there is a large working distance we cannot have a small working distance as it is a large working distance then we can have a large for a large working distance we can have a much higher depth of field because for a large working distance we can have a larger depth of field because in that case the angle of aperture alpha divergence angle will be small. So, here um, and there is um, this is the lenses and inside the lens we have a stigmator. So, the lens is designed in a manner that you have a stigmator and also we have deflection coils uh, inside the objective lens and then we have a beam limiting aperture that is the real position. Uh, if the aperture is placed inside the lens then we say it is a real, if the aperture is placed above the lens then we say it is a virtual position uh, for any kind of objective lens. So, in this case primarily out of lens type sample is kept outside the lens system. Advantage that you can take a bigger sample you can have a larger depth of field. Then we have a immersion lens. In the immersion lens sample is placed within the lens system as you see sample is placed within the lens system. So, you cannot take a very large size sample you cannot take a very large size sample, but it has advantage that you can have a smaller working distance or the focal length can be small and that would allow us to get high resolution image you will see how because having a smaller working distance means we will have a larger angle of aperture larger angle of aperture we can have a finer spot of the electron beam much finer spot of the electron beam and having a much finer spot of electron beam will provide us high resolution image. So, if you, uh, you are looking for a high resolution image to see the features or object of size less than 1 nanometer then you should prepare immersion lens that is called in lens type in lens type. But there is one disadvantage if your sample is magnetic in nature if your sample is magnetic in nature then uh, it is preferred that you do not use in lens type because the sample magnetic field will interact with the magnetic field of the lenses and thereby it will distort the image. So, so for uh, magnetic sample we uh, prefer not to use immersion lens type objective lens. 
then we have a third type which is snorkel or semi lens this is called semi lens semi lens type where the magnetic uh, magnetic field reaches out to the specimen specimen is outside the objective lens but the magnetic field is reaches to the specimen uh, in the semi lens type therefore it take the best features of the out of lens and in lens type so in this cases we can take a, a bigger size sample we can uh, study larger area we can have a larger depth of field at the same time we can also have a smaller working distance because we can bring the sample close to the lens and also we can study magnetic type of sample so semi lens gives us the best feature of both out of lens and in lens type and therefore mostly used by the uh, researcher or the persons who are looking for um, the best quality of the images so this this is about the three different type of objective lenses used in the scanning electron microscope so then we talk about effect of objective uh, aperture size as you see here we have objective aperture here the aperture beam limiting aperture and that can be real position and or virtual position so that aperture size uh, have a role uh, in the performance of the microscope aperture size decreases the beam angle let's say here as you see aperture size is decreasing the beam angle from alpha 1 to alpha a for the electrons entering the objective lens so it has uh, the three main important effects uh, there is an optimum aperture angle that minimizes the detrimental effect of the aberration on the final prop size so having a larger angle of aperture alpha 1 would increase the spherical aberration will increase the chromatic aberration because in case of spherical aberration is proportional to the uh, cube of alpha alpha q that is therefore increasing the alpha we increase the spherical aberration similarly chromatic aberration is proportional to the alpha angle of aperture so it will also increase chromatic aberration so therefore you cannot take a very big aperture but uh, there are also uh, consequences the finer convergence angle controls the image depth of field so by decreasing the angle of aperture you can have larger depth of field larger depth of field at the same time you if you take a alpha to a small value then you cannot have very fine prop you cannot have a very fine the prop size will become uh, will become more if you have a smaller alpha so there is consequence for uh, having different type of objective aperture size bigger the alpha bigger the alpha better is for high resolution imaging smaller smaller the alpha will be better the larger depth of field so it depends on what you need accordingly you can choose objective aperture size if you want a high resolution image then you will need a larger ob ob objective aperture but if you need a uh, you do not need a high resolution image or high magnification image but if you want to look overly in a larger area so therefore you need larger depth of field then you should choose a smaller objective aperture size then we talk about the role of lens effective um, effect of condenser lens strength so with fixed objective aperture size and working distance a stronger condenser lens increases the demagnification so as as we if we uh, use a strong condenser lens then we will make a finer uh, prop as be, a prop become finer then you have a smaller current so therefore a strong condenser lens increases the demagnification and reduce the prop size and prop current in addition more beam current will be stopped by the aperture that reduce the prop current that the final prop size can be reduced at the expense of decreasing the prop current so here as you see here uh, 
if we have more condensed length strength, then we have a smaller prop and working distance also will be smaller. So, working distance as it is written distance from the center of the objective lens to the specimen is our working distance. This is the distance is our working distance. This distance is our working distance. So, when the working distance becomes smaller, then you have a finer prop size, finer smaller prop size and this means you have a stronger condenser lens. So, this is good when you are going for a high resolution image, if you are going for a high resolution image. On the other hand, here uh, the condenser length strength is weak, therefore, you have focal length is more, focal length is more, you have uh, a prop current more because you have a wider beam, therefore, prop current will be more, prop current more means more signal you will get, you can more of our you can get uh, uh, larger area analysis, this is what about the effect of uh, condenser lens strength. Then effect of working distance with fixed objective aperture and condenser lens strength. So, larger the working distance, larger will be spot size and the specimen surface that are for resolution that we have discussed with the same beam current. So, larger the working distance, smaller will be the again larger the working distance, smaller will be the conversion angles, that larger will be depth of field. This is what the case is for uh, here larger working distance, you have a larger working distance, therefore, you could have a uh, larger depth of field and also at the same time uh, we have a spot site will be bigger. So, this is the effect of working distance. So, if you are looking for a high resolution image, then you should prefer to have a smaller working distance as long as the beam current is enough for you to get the signal. So, what today we have discussed uh, in today lecture, uh, first I have discussed about the gun characteristic, then the different lenses that play important role on converging or demagnifying the electron beam produced at the gun to a fine spot. If we uh, what objective lens must be chosen for what type of sample and what information you required, so that is what we discussed. So, what type of objective lens should be chosen for what type of sample. Then we have also discussed that uh, a small working distance and small uh, strong condenser lens will generally produce high resolution image. So, what we have seen here the objective lens aperture size, working distance, lens strength all these plans all these points will play important roles in microscopic study depending upon the information we require. So, the reference again uh, are the same books uh, and uh, thank you for attention.